players are established. They've remained in familiar homes, and they're going to say that they're faster, fitter, and more ready than ever. And after a season filled with so many successful rider and team changes, 2023 Monster Energy AMA Supercross promises a more refined process with veteran names at the top in their old places and looking to put on an even better show. Welcome to your 2023 Monster Energy Racer X preview shows for the Monster Energy Supercross Championship for the new season. Jason Wigand, Steve Mathis, and Jason Thomas here. I spent more than two decades covering this uh, series as both a journalist and a broadcaster. Steve, former factory mechanic, now internet rabble rouser. And JT, how many years as a pro in this championship? Somewhere around 16. Or wow. as Steve would say, 15 okay ones and one terrible one. We don't talk about the last year. <laughs> okay, that doesn't count. <laughs> At least you're giving them credit for the other mm -hmm. 15. So we'll bring in a lot of experience here, and we will talk about these riders in five episodes. So don't get mad, anybody, if the rider that you like isn't mentioned here in show one, because we have five shows. And I have gone through the list, I've gone through the calculations, I've gone through the data, and I don't think anyone, though, could really argue with who is in episode one. We have Jason Anderson, Eli Tomac, Cooper Webb. What's not to love? I'd like to argue about who's in this episode. I so know you would. Let's go. Let's many, go. How many years have we done this? Let's go. How many years? This is, uh, we are entering 10 seasons now of these 10 shows. 10 seasons. Yes. And generally speaking, the opening show is the title favorites. Mm -hmm. That is generally what happens. Yes, yes. And by the way, we'll make our title picks on show four. Yes, after we're all not, of our four not making them here. Yes, but yes. So you have great riders here, Anderson and Webb and Tomac. Yes, thank you. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, Chase Sexton? Uh, he won a race last year. Mm -hmm. He almost beat Eli Tomac outdoors. He was really consistent near the end of Supercross last year. He's got speed to burn. He's not in here. I I want to apologize to Chase Sexton, to American Honda, to Lars Lindstrom, to Beaker, and to everybody in the Sexton family for Weech not putting you in this episode one. You should be in this episode one. I don't know why he hasn't done it. And it's a terrible mistake has happened. You'll just have to watch episode two. Or maybe three or four. We'll just see where Sexton ends <laughs> up. You've fallen into the trap. Here is the big talking point. Last year we did this show. Three riders, Roxon, Webb, and Tomac had dominated the last three years. They'd won 84% of the races of the three seasons leading into last year. Webb was a defending champ. And we all picked him to be the 2022 champ because he's on this new, improved KTM. Has Webb JT fallen this far where he's gone from last year's defending champ and preseason favorite to he shouldn't even be in our first episode. That is a dramatic drop. I understand the argument. And based off of last year's results, it's not hard to argue. But I think over a historical period, Thank he, you. Des he deserves to be one of the contenders. Mm -hmm. He's okay. a two-time well, champion okay, just add over Chase the last Sexton. four years. Sure, just add Chase Sexton to this. I'm not saying take Webb out. Episode so it can two only be or three. three or four it can only be, be three. We've had four in here. It can uh, only be three. I, I want the other shows to be good as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, yeah, it's complete BS that he's not in this show. Okay, that's but, fair. Um, I asked Webb, uh, I told him we were doing these shows, and what should I say about him? Yeah. And uh, he said, well, Weege, your guy Weege texted me also. I, I did my research. A and yes. then he told me, just say I'm washed up. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's official. He's washed up, everybody. It's official. No, listen, I, I think the bike wasn't, they didn't gel with the bike. He, did, yeah. he wasn't with Alden Baker to start, mm -hmm. and it slowly just sort of compounded Poorly, he went back to Alden, you know, midway season or as the series went east. Minneapolis, I believe. Minneapolis, yep. it was already kind of going south on that point. He, he rebounded a little bit. Uh, it never got on track. He never looked the same. He never had He that. wasn't beating Tomac level last year, I mean, even as it got better. It didn't even come close, right? No. So I, I, I do think the bike was part of the problem, but you can't just say it's all in the bike. Some of this problem was Cooper Webb. Yeah. Training, not hungry, whatever you want, um, whatever it was, bike and – Cooper Webb didn't gel. I think we see a better Cooper Webb this year. I think they'll learn some things on that bike. They'll make some changes on it. He's a two-time champion. But I don't have him right now uh, up to regain this title. I just don't. You don't have him at the Anderson, Tomac, or Sexton, Sexton level. level. I do not. I need to see it from Coop. And uh, um, maybe he is washed up. We'll see. Uh, I did do my research, and I asked them uh, what have they changed on the bike this year compared to last year. Uh, pretty much everything. Uh, fork style, shock. Uh, linkage, uh, bearing races, uh, foot pegs, transmission, engine, engine hangers, you name it, they've changed it. He said more of a production style, which I think would translate to less rigid. Uh, but whatever it was, it wasn't working, and not just for him. Pretty much every KTM rider struggled. Never saw Jeffrey Hurling's race in MXGP. He was spared from it. Um, but to Steve's point, JT, I'm not sure it's just that. They can make big strides, yes. But I think Cooper has to get that fire lit again, and maybe... 
you saying he shouldn't be in this show could do that. Well, listen, J- JT's going to blame the bike. We already know that. He's, oh, really? He, he's the rider advocate. Okay. I'm the team advocate okay. out of us three, right? I see. You worked uh, for a team speaking, and he was ready. Okay. Right. I like generally this. Generally speaking, so J- here's come, here comes JT talking about that bike. Oh, here we go. Go ahead. But, but yes, yes, <laughs> but it's not just because of Cooper Webb. Ask anybody who rode a new model KTM or Husky 250 or 450, and they're going to tell you the exact same thing. So I don't think it's just a Cooper Webb didn't mesh with the no, bike. They, they got one win. They're, they were far off there. Right. Uh, I, I think uh, it. Standards. I think it was a yeah. a new bike. None of them really meshed with it well. It had some flaws that they need to work out, and we're going to find out in 2023 if they've sorted those things out or not. But to say that it wasn't a big shift from the motorcycle, and I'm not also saying that he didn't slip because he wasn't with Alden Baker. But in that same breath, I was there in December. I watched him training and riding and doing the things, and I left there going, he looks really ready, right? So. That didn't show up most of the races. He did get second at the opener. Let's, let's not forget that. But I, I, I come back to your point is well made. I do blame the bike somewhat. I think anytime you switch the bike, it can create unforeseen problems. I don't think they went into Anaheim 1 thinking, man, we're in trouble here. Yeah. Right? So you look at Cooper Webb, how last year went. I'm not saying this, how they're gonna, this is going to go, but Eli Tomek's in the same boat where they think it's going to go extremely well too. Doesn't mean it will, doesn't mean it won't. But everybody goes into a one with a plan, especially with a new bike, thinking they're in a really good spot. And you don't find out you're not until, you know, 20 minutes plus, yeah, plus nothing, one lap in. Nothing can replicate racing it under can't, the lights. It can't. Uh, yeah. Absolutely not. On a track that you're not familiar with. And, and a lot of times so. to remember, too, when these guys are riding, they're riding with the same guys on the same chassis on the same bike, right? So if you're way off the pace of, like, Anderson, you may not know it until it's too late. You're a Cooper Webb guy. I mean, sorry, you're an Alden Baker guy. I am. He's back. I am. But I'm sure they went into the Paris Supercross in November thinking, like, man, we should be pretty good here. They were half a lap down. Dude, you were there, Steve. They were half a lap down. Justin Brayton was putting it to him, which, I mean, Justin Brayton is godlike, especially so, internationally. three minutes into our first show, you bring up the retired Justin Brayton. <laughs> I think it's more who of a had, travesty. That he would have been in show one. He would have been in show one, who but he's retired. had the retired. over under three he, minutes? Right. He would have been in this show. Okay. Uh, you were at Paris. If you were looking for the Cooper Reb rebirth, that wasn't it. No, it wasn't. And, I, I, I mean, afterwards, you know, he had told me publicly and privately that they weren't ready, and he yeah. knew that, and it was fine. Okay. It was a gauge, you know. Alden does the whole boot camp thing, right? This yeah. wasn't quite at, at the peak of boot camp. So, okay. you know, there was all that. But, it, yeah, the bike, Marvin Muskan was there too, and neither one could do the whoops. That's And that's – as yeah. good as the as as good as the other three. That's guys. what I'm getting at. Boot camp, be damned. If you can't get through the whoops, that's not a boot camp thing. That's yeah. we haven't figured out what's going to make this bike work to the level that we need to be at. This doesn't mean they can't ride fast. It means that they can't go the level they need to win. And Roxon and Tomac were, by anybody's account, m- on a much higher level than they were in Paris. I'm just going to make a vow here, and I hope I stick to it. I've broken some vows before, but I am not going to go off Anaheim one. As like any sort of oh, guide please. to what's going <laughs> no, to happen. I'm no. not. I'm done. I'm done with that. Uh, uh, yeah. Cooper Webb got second. Ken Roxon won. Ken Roxon won. Anderson way back. Tomac, eh. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm done with Anaheim one. Like, who, who knows? All right, we're done talking about Cooper Webb for now. We just talk about it because it's so dynamic. He could win the title. At least I believe he's done it before. He could have us another struggle season. We don't know. There's a wide window. Well, yeah, he could definitely yes. win this title. I don't want to. I don't, don't put him. Yes. I don't put him on the level as the other three guys. But yes. He, he's on that level. So that's a wide window, and that's a big talking point. But we all know who is the star of the series coming in. It is Eli Tomac. He won the title by only nine points last year, but he didn't even race the final race due to a knee injury. Jason Anderson was great last year. But it was all about Eli Tomac as the star of both Supercross and Motocross in 2022. And Steve, let's be honest. You first broke the news that he was going to Blue Crew in May of 2021. And it was a new lease on life. I don't think a lot of people believed it would be this good. But you probably believed you're a Blue Crew guy. Once you go Blue Crew, man, your life changes. Everything's at peace. You, you ride better. You feel better. Your ceilings uh, get taller. You know, I, 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 have a, I happen to be fortunate enough to, to ride a Yamaha YZ450. And it's incredible, man. I'll tell you what. Uh, it turned Eli Tomac's career around, and we saw what it did. And, and honestly, in all seriousness, I have the 2023, and I'm not as good of a rider as Eli Tomac. I'm going to come right out and <laughs> okay, say that right, right, right now. Thank yep, you for clarifying. Now. Thank yep, you for clarifying. Yep. Uh-huh. yep. But uh, that bike is better indoors, without a doubt. I've been talking a little bit with Dylan Ferrandez, and I, I talked a little bit to Eli. It turns sharper. It's lighter. It sits. You sit more on it than in it than the other model. Uh, it's not as long as the other model. This will be a 100% better bike for Supercross than outdoors, 
And that's the way – I mean, it's just going to – so if you think about how good he was last year on the other bike, this is a more supercross-oriented bike. I mean, he might go 17-0 and for Blue Crew. He might. Dude, you are ridiculous with the selling out for your sponsors. That is absolutely – Ridiculous. I mean, Yamaha this, Yamaha that. Let's not forget how good Jason Anderson was last year. But seriously, that, that new Yamaha. Hey, we heard it last year. The new K10 was going to be great. JT, we never know. You never know with new model bikes. You don't. And, sir, and, sir, you know with this one. Oh, oh here, of course. Right. But God, I, you're so biased towards certain brands. I would never sell out for a certain brand. I would never associate my entire life no. behind a brand, right? That's just not in me. Me like, neither. I'm very unbiased. Yes. Right. Very unbiased. No. Straight, nope. down, straight down the that middle for me. That sounds horrible. Nope. Uh, but, you know, you're speaking of talking about Jason Anderson. I think he might be one of the most underrated stories coming into 2023. And it's crazy for me to even say that because this guy won seven races in 2022. He was the dominant rider down the stretch of 2022. And you always have to be careful with that statement because we know Eli Tomac was both dealing with a, a knee injury that he was kind of working through. And also he was protecting a points lead. So there's two different storylines there, but that should not detract for away from how great Anderson was. Anderson went on to have his best pro motocross series ever, right? And I got to talk to him in December, and you could just tell there was an air of confidence about him. I don't think any of these guys, Eli Tomac included, intimidated him. And I think if you went down the line, and, and a lot of them are not going to admit it, that's who they are, but they all look at Tomac and like, ah. Uh, I don't know if I can beat that guy, right? Anderson knows he can. He went heads up against him many, many times in 2022 and came out the better for it. So I think Anderson's mindset is back in championship mode, and he won the 2018 championship. 2022 was arguably a better season. Just Ar to, no, it was. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm just saying yeah. if, you, if you say that to somebody that's just looking at the record books, they're going to tell you you're crazy. But I agree with you. He was a better rider in 2022 than he was in 2018. And I think – that's going to translate into 2023. And I'll tell you why, because he's on the same team. He's on the same bike. They've gotten better. His confidence has improved. So why wouldn't he take the next step? Now, I don't know if that translates into a championship. That is the big question. Does he win races? To me, that's an immediate yes, right? The question is, over the course of 17, can he avoid the mistakes? Can he stay out of run-ins with Justin Barsha? Can he avoid jumping off the track like he get, did in Glendale and, I believe, A2? He does a good job when he does jump off the track, though. Like, of jumping back on. Yeah, he's, he's, he's one very of the masters impressive. of that. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, I know. But, but there was too much drama. You can't give there was up. too much. You can't give up 10, 15 points on a yeah. given night to Tomac because yeah. he's not giving those well, back. He drama. is not going to give those he, back. He, 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 him he and Malcolm had a thing. He had a couple things at Barsha that weren't his fault, but him and Malcolm had, like, an ongoing soap opera, yep. and, and that was very costly in points. Yep. He hit uh, Kenny at, at uh, San Diego. Oh, the sand. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that wasn't necessarily, like, a – I, I defended that pass, you know, yeah. but but still, hey, if you just check up, maybe those yeah. things, the yeah. cumulative effect of those cost you a lot in a championship when you're up against a guy like Tomac who gives you nowhere to breathe. He just, he will suck the life out of you over the course of a series because well, he doesn't make mistakes. And now he's got a 2023. Why is he 450? <laughs> you didn't even talk about Tomac. You didn't even mention it. Tomac is, he had arguably the best season that we've seen in a decade you by anybody. Arguably. It's not arguable. Well, Vill Villapoto was pretty great at times. Uh, I mean, that was more than a decade ago, wasn't it? No. 20? Uh, exactly. Oh, right on. No, oh. 20, 20, right on. Okay. 13. 13. 13. 13. Good. Less yeah. than a decade. Yeah, right okay. there. So, yes. He was amazing. I don't even feel like I need to talk about Tomac because if you don't yeah. have Tomac locked into your championship contender and arguably the favorite, you're not watching the sport. He, he won everything almost that he lined up for in 2022. He was a dominant player in every series, Motocross the Nations, Paris, Cardiff. That story has already been written. The only question I have for Tomac is, one, is he your champion in 2023? And B, 1A, I guess, is that the last season for him? Th those are really the only questions. Is he going to be great? I don't think is even up for debate. No, not at this point. Hey, I would just Bike, want to give a shout out to all our better. sponsors. Bikes better. Bikes better, yeah. Yeah, we got we, it. We're aware. We got it. We're aware. It was already amazing, and somehow it's an A++ now. <laughs> yes, it's incredible. Somehow reach new levels. Yes. No, for Supercross, it'll be better. Uh, yeah. You can't like, say that, though. You I don't can't. I ride, I ride one. In Supercross. In Supercross. No, it turns better. <laughs> it, it, it's lighter. It turns I, I, better. I rode a bike, also, in, I rode a bike I, in 2009 that turned better. I've been testing. But it was the worst motorcycle that I've ever ridden. I've talked, I've but text, it did turn better. I've texted with a certain French rider who also has ridden the 22 and the 23. Tom Vial. Back to back. <laughs> Yamaha. So okay. Okay. No, no. He's think, a Yamaha think, guy. Think Blue Crew. Gautier, okay. call in. And he vouches for what I've been saying. Um, so, DV? Yeah, DV. DV. I, I don't know. I just, yeah, I, I think the there will be, having said all that, and in all seriousness, 
I do think they're a little bit behind on the bike. Dylan's had it for like two or three weeks before. Eli did. Eli rode those off-season races on the 22. Eli's notorious for being a little picky. Roman Febra. We got to get a sa is sag, right? We got to get uh, a yeah, sag. Yeah, do not have that bike <laughs> break down in the back. Um, so I think there will be some stuff figuring out with that bike, but he's going to get stronger as the season goes on. No shock so, there. So, so is your official take that he will be better than he was in 2022? Because of the bike. I mean, uh, honest question. Yeah, yeah. No, no I, I, well, championship picks will be waiting. Right. Um, so just wait. But, okay. But, uh, but it, the bike will be the better. The There's bike a will be better. He's a, he's a year okay. older. You think it's a significantly he, step up? Is, is it going to be 31? Machinery. 30? 30. 30? 30, 30, yeah. 30. 30. Traditionally, 30 is a big number for a Supercross racer. So he's that, got he's got a year of massive success. Okay. I think it's his last year. I don't believe he will do the Pro Motocross Series. He'll probably do the SMX Series. So I think it's his last year. So we may not get a 100% motivated Eli Tomac, but this bike will be better for Supercross. Mark my words. Okay. At the end, where we – oh, Salt Lake City? Yep. I'm going to go up to Eli Tomac at Salt Lake City, regardless of where he finishes. I don't care what happens. I will bust okay. into his motorhome. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I will go up to him, and I'll say, was this bike better okay. for Supercross? And he will say yes. Okay. The and Old the only plate. reason I ask that is Rem because can you remind me of this. Yeah, I cannot. I wait. think okay. most people, <laughs> most people consider that bike the best bike on the gate, behind the gate, for 2022. So that's a really high bar, right? If you were, if it was an average bike and nobody was really ranting and raving about it, I would say, yeah, that's okay. That, that's great. They made an improvement. But that bike, everybody was already like, man, this thing is awesome. They, it, they, you're right. It was awesome, and it's awesomer. No, uh, they have traded stability to. Cut inside. That's turns. a little scary. Yeah, that's a little scary. That's a little scary. Can we just end the debate? I know you've okay. ridden it and you own one. Yep. Yeah. Let's go to our actual own oh, well, testing guru. This we gentleman may know a few more things about, about bikes than me. Developing motorcycles. Yeah. We have Chris Kiefer on staff at Racer X. Helps you out with pulp as well. Chris Kiefer actually tests motorcycles for a living. He's not here because he's busy testing right now, but I was able to grab him on Zoom. And let's give his take on the 2023 Yamaha YZ450F. Kiefer. All right, guys. So what, unlike what Mathis says on this whole show and these videos that we've done for racer X, it is not the Jesus Christ of motorcycles. Okay. It is a new motorcycle. Obviously everyone knows when you have a new motorcycle in the racing world, it is tough to get parts. It is tough to do all the testing and fit everything in, in that short window of time before January. Right? So here we are a couple weeks out, a one's right around the corner and look, Yamaha has done a good job with their new motorcycle, but it is a new motorcycle and it feels completely different. Uh, if Honda and Yamaha got together and had a baby, this is the 2023 YZ450F. It is a stiffer frame. Uh, it acts a little bit different coming into corners. It has a little bit of twitch. And from what I've heard, um, the riders have been feeling this as well leading up to January. So there is a lot of work going down from what I've heard as well as Dylan gets along with the bike a little bit more than Eli. Eli was uh, more particular with certain parts going on his bike. I know some of the 22 parts have found their way back on the 23. So regardless that it is a brand new frame and um, a brand new engine, there are some things that the race teams can do to kind of get that old feeling back. So that's what they're doing. But I do think the Yamaha boys in the 450 class do have a disadvantage come January. And it wouldn't surprise me to see Eli, as well as Dylan, not on the podium come A1. All right, that is Chris Kiefer's take on the new Yamaha. Yeah, I do get a little worried when I hear it's a little bit less stable, but turns better, sounds good on paper, doesn't always work. Are we doing any fifth gear straightaways in Supercross? Did I uh, did I miss those? Uh, they got comfort. They always did, talk did, comfort. Did I miss that somewhere? Comfort. Okay. But, yeah, it's something. Right. Don't worry about you know, it. You know the whoops are big for stability, yes. Don't, don't worry about it. Okay. Let me just thank the sponsors of our show. Monster Energy is our title sponsor. Thanks, Phil. Uh, he once wore their hat, so we put it back on there. Uh, also, Maxima, Maxxis Tires, and Fly Racing Gear. Um... We always do segments for each of our sponsors, and mine is the well, Maxis where the rubber meets the road. Okay, yeah, but is this yeah. the is this where we start talking about Chase Sexton? Because this is episode one. This is episode one. Yes, you so gotta wait till episode maybe two, Sexton? three, or four. I'm not Sexton? sure. No, Sexton's on in episode one. Oh, so he's with the Sexton. He's with A Ray and those guys. Uh, you'll have to see. Okay, you'll have to see. Right, cool. I don't know. The problem right here, is I think that he's a main event guy. Right, right. The problem for you is that Sexton doesn't ride Blue Crew. So how can you even say he has a chance? Wow, imagine well, if that combination happened. Well, how this, can you say he has a chance? This proves to the viewers, uh, sir. That I am an unbiased journalist. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because right, we got will it. See. 
All right, so my segment is where the Maxis Rubber meets the road. We've been doing this the last couple of years. Who really has to get it done? Who has no extra rope, no extra leverage? Who really has to step up the game? And to me, there's no doubt that is Cooper Webb. We, Tomac's playing with house money. There's no doubt about it. I don't think anyone is doubting Jason Anderson at all. Uh, some people don't even think that Cooper Webb should be in episode one. They think he should be slotted behind Chase Sexton. And here's where it's key. The next couple of years of Cooper Webb's career are going to be determined with how it goes right now. And the most interesting part is only a one-year extension just to race this year with KTM. I don't believe it is the perfect marriage between Webb and KTM. I think KTM kind of pokes at him a little bit and doubts him because that's what fires him up. But we know how riders are. If they don't feel loved, they start looking for another home. He had success, dare I say it, with Star Racing and Blue Crew and Yamaha in the past. They have a great 450 program. Some say their new bike is better in Supercross. So I think if it doesn't go well quickly for Webb and KTM, they both start looking to greener pastures. So the rubber meets the road. He's got to be good early. There was so much team switch that worked last year. You've got to wonder if riders have that in the back of their mind a little more than they used to. Yeah, I think you're right, Weege, in the fact that I do think this is his last year over there, and I think he – I think I'm just saying it's potential. You're saying oh, oh, I you think, think it, he's moving on. I think on. it is, and I yeah. think Chase Sexton's coming on over, Okay. and Cooper Webb will depart. Um, and whether he goes to Star Yamaha, we'll see, but that seems like a natural fit. It with does. With Tomac hanging it up, so mm -hmm. if you just play the uh, look down the road and play the cards right, you can see that happening pretty easily. So yeah, but if Webb goes out and they made bike changes and he and crushes it this year, yep. then I think he stays. That will be an interesting pickle for yeah. the uh, guys in Austria to, to determine because that's a big money. I, would, I, would, I think they'll pay both if they need to. But I would pose mm -hmm. the question, mm -hmm. if we think Sexton's going to leave, Right, and if Cooper Webb has a good year, does he choose to stay? Maybe he wants to go where Chase Sexton just left. Maybe he wants to go be Jet Lawrence's teammate at HRC Honda HRC. Like I don't think that that story has been written. Yeah, Jason Anderson doesn't have a contract yet. Cooper Webb doesn't have a contract yet. Eli Tomac is likely departing. We're guessing, right? Altogether, so there's a yep. lot of musical chairs that can all change direction. It doesn't have to be. Well, Webb has to do good so he can stay on a KTM. I don't think that's necessarily how this has to go. Maybe it does. Yeah. But it doesn't have to go that way. I just think that if he does do well in the KTM, I think he stays. Maybe so. Yeah. Maybe so. Uh, my segment is uh, Maxima USA, SC1. We all know oh. how this saved me in my mechanicing career. How, how so? How come? Um, because when I got lazy and mm -hmm. didn't want to work on my bike, I mm -hmm. just sprayed it with SC1, and everyone said, wow, look at that bike. <laughs> my mechanic must have stayed up all night. <laughs> but I didn't. I was down at the Chili's. Yeah. Eating. K chips and queso. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And when my bike looked good. So thank you to Maxima USA for saving me. SC1 uh, is great stuff. It. Yep, it's fantastic. Oh, jeez. The shine. The shine of mm -hmm. Maxima SC1 will of be. Of these guys. Of these guys. Don't pick Sexton. He's not on the show. He might be in show two, three, or four. We don't know. Uh, don't worry. He's going to pick the Yamaha guy. You guys will see that the 2023 Yamaha will shine. <laughs> you are unbelievable. Out on the track. Unbelievable. It turns on a dime and gives you nine cents change. Steve, how does that bike it corner? Amazing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It, it, it is lightweight. It says five pounds in the brochure. It feels like 50. Oh, my God. This is unbelievable. It, 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 I, I it, did it, talk to Brad from Star, no joke, and he did say that that's the main thing Tomac is coming Brad and I have always been super tight. Oh, yeah, you're always super tight. Close. Yeah, absolutely. Tight. So uh, my chance to shine, uh, choice of shining, should say, Eli Tomac. Let's do this, Eli. All right, Jason Thomas, you're with Fly Racing and WPS. Who's going to fly out of this trio? Can't talk Sexton because he might be in show two, three, or four. Who's going to fly to this group? I think Jason Anderson is going to really impress us. Uh, I He's my pick to win A1. I think he comes in. I think he always impresses early in the season. Last year, he impressed late in the season. But I think he's going to come in with this air of confidence that I'm talking about. I think he feels like he belongs in that championship conversation where I don't think a year ago he was so sure. I think he wanted to. He knew he was going fast to the test track. But it's like it had been a couple years since he was really there. This year, I think – the cards are perfectly lined up for him. He has had a really smooth offseason. He's gotten married. He has a kid on the way. So I think that's brought – gave him a new level of maturity, gave him per some perspective on this career a little bit, and he's – He had time off he that did. these other guys did he not. He did, right. He got to recharge his batteries a little bit. He's got to go through a full testing offseason with the team where last year they were working through settings at the races because they hadn't encountered a lot of these situations. If the bike didn't feel perfect, they didn't have last year to go off of. This year they will – uh, so I, he's my pick for who's going to be flying is Jason Anderson, and I think he wins A1. Wow. Exciting. That's a, that's a bold claim. Uh, also bold, playing Pulp Mix Fantasy. Oh, it's bold. To help yourself enjoy the Supercar Series. JT, you know as well as I do the joys 
of Pulp Mix Fantasy. It is uh, over $150,000 of prizes, uh, bicycles, dirt bikes up for grabs, and uh, you can pay to play, and uh, tons of prizes each week, weekly prizes. You don't even got to be good at fantasy like me to win. We have randomly, we're giving away a YZ450. Randomly, we're giving away a TTR if you sign up before Anaheim 1. PulpMixFantasy.com. Easy to play, fun to play, even Weege pays to play, and that says something. Yeah, because I keep thinking I'm going to win. But if you think it's a joy to play, I wish I could put a darn camera it's a really during the calming LCQ. calming experience. Oh, yeah. It's a really calming experience, I want experience, a camera right? in, the, in the booth to watch you guys watch an <laughs> LCQ and tell me how joyful yeah, you fantasy pick, you is. you pick A-Ray and Freddy and sit back. The oh, cool, just relax. The coolest thing about Pope Max Fantasy, though, is the race at the front is awesome. Everybody wants to watch Tomac and Anderson and Webb and Sex and all these guys. But the battle for the guys you just mentioned – Makes yeah. the whole night, yep. right? There is more suspense around the LCQ at A1 because of Pulp MX Fantasy than anything else that this sport could have created. So if you've never played, I would in invite you to try it. It's going to be frustrating, but it's also going to be wildly entertaining too, and it just brings a whole new aspect to the sport. Honestly, when uh, um, the Japanese Kawasaki rider. Atsuda? No. Tony Kong? Koga. 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 When Koga made the main event, and he was a 16 handicap a few years ago. Top 10 moment in my life. Oh, okay. really? Oakland, right? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Top yeah. 10 yeah. moment in your oh, life. Yeah. yeah. When you pick a guy like that. It was that, unbelievable. And he comes out of nowhere and makes the main event. It just makes your whole life I better. must have tweeted 27 times simply about Koga after yeah. that LCQ. Uh, also, I would. We've uh, talked more about Koga than we did Sexton in the show. Now you're right. I agree. It's a travesty. <laughs> it's not his show. This is Koga's show. <laughs> before, <laughs> we go, before we go, I want to apologize again. Reiterate. I didn't set the lineup up, Chase and family and Beaks and <laughs> – Alpine Stars and Gabrielle and everybody. <laughs> I didn't do this. It was Jason Wygett. You should be in this show. You're beautiful to watch on the bike, and you should have been in this show. And I'm sorry, you're not. We're, we're just keeping the fans engaged throughout all five episodes of the show brought to you by Monster and Maxima and Maxis and Fly Racing. Go to supercrosslive.com for your tickets for Supercross or go to supermotocross.com. This is now part of a 17 race, 11 race, three race, 31 total race format, Supercross, Motocross, and then the Super Motocross playoffs. It's a 31 race tour. We'll give out the regular championships and then a big money title at the end. We'll get into that in future episodes of these shows. But for now, enjoy your Monster Energy Episode 1 preview for Supercross. We'll be back and probably talk about Chase Sexton. Maybe. Maybe in our next one. Free Chase. <laughs>